There we go. It's kind of crooked. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I'll try it. Early morning for you, right? Well, this is okay. 11.30, it's like lunchtime, but I'm not. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, welcome, and I'm really happy to have you. And uh, I was just sharing that uh, I discovered you because I went plant uh, this book shopping before lockdown happened. And one of the books that caught my attention was yours. And Thank you. Yes. And the second one I seeing growing Thanks. dark. I think that's released in May or June. Yeah. I'm sorry. When is this one coming out? The growing dark. Oh, this one came out. This one came out last May. And then the next one isn't coming out till August. And it's, it's oh. more of a project book. Yeah. It's got a, it's got I, projects. This okay, so how did you get started with plants? If you can give a brief introduction and then we can take it from there. Um, I grew up in um, rural mid Michigan, which is a state in you know the United States, and it's I, I lived in the country. My brothers and I we went outside, we climbed trees, we um, my parents or my grandparents owned a farm, so we were like playing in the barn and. We were helping grandma in the garden, helping mom in the garden, and I just love plants. So um, my grandma had the African violets, and my mom had her fern, and so I just, I, I'm addicted. I went, to, I went to college for one year of horticulture. That's where I met my husband, and his, his family owns a garden center, so he loves plants too, and my kids love plants, and we're just all plant nerds. <laughs> That's very interesting. Uh... It's always uh, very interesting to see someone who takes it their passion or interest to education. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned about your mom, so I was looking through your Instagram, and on the Mother's Day, you have shared this post about a fern. Uh, yes. Would you like to share a bit more about that with our viewers? That was a very interesting sure. story. Um, and, and my mom got married in 1957, and my great grandmother on my dad's side gave her a fern. And um, I also shared in another post, my, her dad, my grandfather, built her a, 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 pl a plant stand out of a porch post, and that's what it always sat on, and I have that as well. So I got one, when I got married in 1985, my mom gave me a piece of that fern, and then my daughter just got married in 2018, and I gave her a piece of the fern. So everybody has a piece. So this is a piece of it right here. Yeah. So what's interesting about it is that it has these fronds, like normal Boston fern fronds, but it also has these fronds. And sometimes, where's the one? Oh, right here. They're on the same frond. So this one, it's really down here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Down here, it's, you know, these, it's this one. And then at the end, it has just the normal frond. So it's always been that way. I don't know what kind it is. Yeah. I don't I don't know. And this was just started. See these little, um, you know, they, they send out these little runners. Right, right. And they're kind of gray. Yeah. And then they, they hang down, and sometimes they'll actually grow a baby right on there. Yeah. Or I could just take this, and when it gets long enough, I could just pin it to a piece of another pot next to it, and right. it will grow another fern. So this one's been growing, I don't know, a few months maybe, or a little longer. So this is a piece of it that I'll probably give to my other daughter. <laughs> So, so, interesting. so you have this fern, which is uh, running since 1957, you're saying? Well, it would have been longer than that because great-grandma had it first and oh. gave a piece to my mom. So it's probably from the, I don't know, 30s or 40s? I have no idea. Could even be older than that. I don't know. So my, no one seems to know. To the plant. You what? I'm saying it gives a totally new meaning to what we call as mother plant. Yes, that's true. Yes, it's been passed along. It's very old. And I have another plant. Um, I'm looking at it, but you can't see it. It's a um, a ponytail palm, uh, Bocarnia recurvata. And I've had it, I went took it to college in 1985 in a two-inch pot. And now it's in a maybe a 14-inch pot. And it's about six feet tall. Pretty soon it's going to outgrow this room. <laughs> so one interesting question I have. So Say when somebody is looking to have, say, a plant which is going to be passed on, right? Yes. So what kind of plant should they, or what are, maybe not specific plant, but what are the qualities of the plant and the climate they should look at so that 
maybe somebody in future may not be so skilled in plants but they can still keep running with that plant well you know and the fern is not the easiest plant and it does it sheds leaves and it and it um you know it, it gets yellow fronds i took some out i took some off it's gonna every fern is gonna shed you know it even still has some little brown leaves on it and it, it's a kind of messy but it's worth it because i've had it forever but i also yeah. think it works better because i don't take it inside and outside you know a lot of people try to bring those big boston ferns uh, here in america we hang them out on the front porch all summer look very quintessentially farmhouse um and then they bring them in the house and they drop every little every one of these little leaflets falls on the ground because i tell them you've had it out in that full sun and it's full and it's got beautiful and it's got million leaves and then you bring it in the house and it drops every leaflet because every plant will only keep the leaves it can support with the light that it has right. if it doesn't have enough heat, it's going to drop those leaves that they can't support but so i wouldn't say that a fern is probably the best thing it's just that it's been in my family and it's been in my house now for this in this house for 21 years i've had it 35 years um just sitting in the east window it doesn't go inside and outside um another good one i mean that ponytail palm has lasted but it would be hard to share that right I mean, I'll give it to the kids someday, but they, it would be hard to, I could probably air layer it and share it. Um, a lot of people pass down um, Christmas Christmas uh, cactus. Right. Uh, many people have had those in their families for 100, 100 years or more. They don't even know how old they are. So, and those are easily shared because they have the little, you know, the little pieces you can break off and share. So that's, you know, like any plant. I mean, you could have a pothos in your family for 100 years. You just keep cutting the ends off and keep propagating it, and it's still the same plant. I mean, this is still the same plant that came off that plant. It's the same plant. It's just a baby of that plant. But you do have the original plant that from 1950. I, she gave it to me because she moved in with her my brother. I guess I should have given her back the big plant, but I just started. She had a smaller room, so I just started a little one. And now I, I'm going to do a blog post about it. I gave it to her, it was about this big, and now it's like this big around again. Mm. So she has peace back in her room. They built a beautiful room for her, and um, she's enjoying it again. She's had it for over 60 years. <laughs> okay, very interesting. This story uh, was also interesting to me in a manner that uh, it also puts in time in perspective when you see the plant grow with your milestones. Uh, like, I know a lot of people who give plants on birthdays or their new job and things like that. And the growth of plant helps put a perspective on how far you have come in general. So yes, and I um, I just posted yesterday. I wrote a I wrote a when I was in college in 1984 85. I wrote a paper about my mom's fern, and I just posted that yesterday. I mean, I found it, and I'm like, I can't believe I still have this. Number one, and it was written on a typewriter. You know, how many people still have a typewriter? Um, and I didn't even white out. I was like, wow, I did this pretty good without using any whiteout. Um, so I just posted that yesterday. So it's always been a part of my life. It's, you know, it was always in the, in the window. Mom was taking care of it all the time. You know, she was watering it all the time. It was beautiful. It, it used to be a lot bigger. I mean, it would take up the whole, it was probably three or four foot across. Right. So I probably need to up my game a little bit. <laughs> Mom did it better. So let's come to some of the questions. So you talk about house plants a lot, right? So what do you see are the say number, say let's talk about top three, either tips or mistakes that people make. Like if they knew that they would can really up their game with plants. You know what, you know my bigger, my biggest, I don't know if it's a pet peeve, but my biggest thing is if you have a pot that doesn't have a hole in it, right. you gotta drill a hole in it. So I use this diamond tip to drill bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's, you know, it's got the yep. little diamond shards or whatever and you have to use water i put it upside down in the sink i run water on it and then i just drill a hole and it works perfect because i don't trying to figure out you know planting a plant in this trying to figure out if it's if it's been gotten wet all the way through or if it's sitting in standing water it's impossible so i or you could if you do if you don't want to drill a hole you know i could hide this pot in there use it as a cash po no one would know and then I take this out, I go water it, I let it drain, and I put it back. That's, but I don't plant directly in something that doesn't have a drainage hole, which is not impossible, you know, because if you've been doing, taking care of plants for a long time, you can just look at a plant and know if it's dry or not, because that's, that's how we are when I get, you know, I can look at a plant from across the room and pretty much tell you if it's dry or not. Uh, depends on the plant. Um, 
And I don't use any, I don't know about you, but I also don't believe in drainage material, you know, like using rocks to yeah. put in the bottom of a pot. I, no. I, I use everything in uh, nursery pot, like even my this big one. They yeah. still be in that nursery pot with almost like seven, not 70, but 30 holes at the bottom because I feel that's the best way to make sure uh, water drains. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and every every plant, I also tell them every plant, whether it's a fern, got a fern, or a snake plant, they this one I had to drill a hole in, but right. they all get water the same until the right. water runs out the bottom, both plants. Because I used to water my cactus, like just give them a little bit of water, it's a cactus or a succulent, I can't overwater it. But every plant gets watered the same until the water comes out the hole. I may not water this again for a month, but I'll probably water this again next week. Right. So it just depends on how often you water it. But definitely a hole in the pot. And I mix my own soil too. Okay. You mix your own soil? I mix my own soil. Uh, what do you, what's your preferred? Well, I, we own a garden center, so I get really big bags of, you know, like big bags that they would buy at the greenhouse. So I mix like, a, it's kind of like a, just a well-drained potting mix. And then I use, um, I use coarse vermiculite, or of course perlite, the white stuff. And then I use vermiculite and I kind of mix it all together until it's really well-drained. True, true. So perlite and vermiculite are not popular here yet. I use them and I believe uh, that is one. So when we talk about drainage, uh, yes. I think they add to the drainage, having a drainage hole and the right soil mix will yes. put in the drainage. And I don't use, I don't use a potty mix that has uh, fertilizer in it because I want to, I want to add my own fertilizer and I don't use, um, some of them have that, you have to check because they have that, those polymers that hold moisture. I also don't yeah. use those. Got those it. are, those are, more, those are better for outside plants in my opinion. <laughs> So there's this one question, I think we can take it with this by Rasna. Uh, so if there's a pot, like she's talking about fish bowl, if there is something without a hole, is there absolutely no plant we can grow or is there something we can do with it? Well, are you saying that you want to, you can grow stuff in a pot without a hole. It just, you have to be very careful when you're watering it. Right. But I mean, I'm sure there's some kind of water plant. There are definitely, if you go to your aquarium store or your pet store, they have great aquarium plants that you can grow in water. I have, and, and I love marimo balls. Do you have a marimo ball? You know, those little algae balls? No, I don't know. What's a miracle ball? It's called marimo, M-A-R-I, marimo ball. And they're like little boss, they're little um, green balls of, they're really an algae, not really a moss. And you, you can just grow them in, water and they they grow naturally like on the lakes in japan like under the water way deep so they really don't need a lot of light so right. great plant and then you know it can be in a bowl of water got it got it got it so basically drill holes if not holes just be very careful yeah i yeah yes and then i if you know like let, i always have a saucer you know of course under your plan a saucer yeah. so if you have a really big and i never let it stand in water for more than like 30 minutes. So if you have a really, really big plant and you've overwatered it, you know, there's too much water and it's sitting in the in water, I use a turkey baster. Do wow. you have a turkey, you know, the turkey baster and, and you can suck the water out of the big saucer if you can't move the plant. <laughs> that's, that's a very interesting idea. I mean, yeah. I have a smaller version. I don't use them for plants. This is basically a big eyedropper, right? Yeah, it's just a big eyedropper. We call it turkey baster. That's what we base the turkey with at Thanksgiving time. But I don't, I don't, ba I'm not a big cook. I don't like to cook. I do, but I don't, I, li I do cook, but I don't like to. So this is more for plants, you know. I suck the water out of the plants if I need to. Um, it's just a good thing to have around. I also really like these long tweezers. Yeah. So if you have like a crown of thorns or any kind of cactus and it's got, you know, gets a leaf stuck in it, Instead right. of reaching your hands in there, you reach these in there. Got it. These work really, really good. <laughs> I can just reach in there, not get poked. <laughs> That's very interesting. So, kitchen is coming to your plants. That's what I see. Yeah. So, uh, we talked about the hole in the pot. Is there any specific type of pot you like to use? Ceramic, plastic, terracotta? You know what? I like whatever grabs my attention. Usually everything is green, 
or it has plants on it. But I do, I do love terracotta. I do, I love terracotta pots too. You know, little pots like this. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think it matters. I, if you have a cactus or a succulent, you know, sometimes it's better to use terracotta because right. it's not glazed. So it, the air, you know, it can, it can, the water can escape from it. Yeah. So it, I, you know, and then if you have a fern, it might be better to use a glazed pot so it really keeps the moisture in longer. So I just, it doesn't matter to me, whatever I like, I just make sure that there's a hole in it. So this didn't have a hole, so I drilled one. That's my prerequisite, prerequisite. Then I was really intrigued by the title of Grow in the Dark. And I think that is one of the issues which I find. I mean, I'm sure even in your handle you get this question, but I think number one question we get, which boils down to is where you have kept your plant. So what is a quick guide for light in home or where to put the plants? Okay, I know I know a lot of people use light meters. I have never personally used a light meter. I don't, I've been growing plants, I mean, you can tell, I'm a, a long time. I've been growing plants for 35 years now, so yeah. in my own home. So I just, I never, you know, they didn't have light meters. I don't think they had light meters back then. And even now they're a little pricey if, to get a good one. So I just, you know, I put plants where I think they're gonna go and where I think, and they do well, and if they don't, then they move them. But, to me, it's like, you know, you're, if you have like a low to medium light plant, that's what it says on the tag, I'm going to put it in a north or an east, maybe back a little ways from a west window. Right. If it says high light or full sun, I'm going to put it in a south window Got it. or really close to a west window. Here, in the, I'm in the northern hemisphere, you know, in the United States. So that's what works for me. Yeah. Um, I guess in the southern hemisphere, it would be the, the, the north window would be your full sun window, right? <laughs> so. We also call it the northern hemisphere, so the same. Yes. Southern, okay. So, yeah, I just, you know, I just, to me, like my begonias, my ferns, my ZZ plants, my, um, what else is out there? They all go in the east window. Or my, I, don't have an, I don't have a north window, so that works. I don't have to worry about that. In my west window, I have, um, I have Sansevieria, I have Edward Neewins. Um, in my south window, I have my bromeliads, I have my ficus, hoyas, mm. um, tillandsias. So I, I guess I just, I kind of go with, I know the plant, so yeah. I put it in that. But I, when I see people that ask, that I get a lot of questions like, what can I put in a bathroom? Because it's very humid, so it's perfect for plants, but it doesn't have a window. True. Nothing. Plastic. <laughs> yeah. Don't buy, I don't like poor plants, so we're not going to go there. Um, <laughs> So you gotta have some light. You have to know your plant. Yeah. If it's if it says it needs high light and all you have is a north window, walk yeah. away or buy some electric lights. You know, yeah. that you can you yeah. can put, you know, electric lights on it. But how do you tell someone you can't have plants? That is I think one of the hardest for me because I see somebody so interested to have plants, but they don't have the light for it. Then you, you have to tell them they have to go out and buy an electric light. You know, buy a, buy a, you can go anywhere and get some kind of LED lights now or come down way in price. You can even buy little spotlights that hang. So you can have plants. You could live in a basement with no windows and have lots of plants if you have light stands. You know, you have lights. Um, but when people say, yeah, but I want to, I want, I want to put this plant on my table in the middle of a dark dining room and they think it's going to live and it's not. So it's, there. Yeah. unfortunately, I love Instagram, I love Facebook, but a lot of it, I try to be very real with my plants. This is the way it goes. This is, I'm very messy and my, here's my windows, you, they're, they're covered. This is my sunroom, it's full, you can't walk in it. Um, right. So I don't, I don't, I don't stage my plants. Like, I have once in a while. I shouldn't say that, never. I never say never. I have staged my plants a couple of times, but I usually tell them where they should be, right? But so many people, and a lot of the uh, TV shows, they put fiddly figs in a dark corner and everybody wanted a fiddly fig and then they all died. Because they yeah. put them in a dark corner. They need full sun in front of the window. They may look good there for a while, but they're slowly dying. <laughs> so you got to kind of take those Instagram pictures with a little, you know, a little grain of salt, I guess, and realize that they look good, but it may not, yeah. may not be long lasting. That may change. As soon as the picture is taken, they'll put it back in the window. 
I think uh, this is one of the thing that e- even I keep talking about because I shoot my windows indoors in my office, and any time I bring something like say a pipers or a jade plant, I always tell them that I brought it in just to shoot this video, just to talk about that right. plant, and because I think one of the things I've seen uh, now happening in India is succulents are being sold a lot. And they are sold yes. primarily as indoor plants, but yes. as for our plants, they don't work indoors. Well, they don't work indoors here in Michigan either. <laughs> they do. <laughs> now I do have some. Now I do have the sunroom, so I'm very lucky. I have, you know, I can yes. grow almost anything in here. So I have window plants right. in every window in the house too, much to my husband's dismay. <laughs> but I do have some in the house, but they. I put them in full sun. I don't have any curtains. They're just like right up against the window. So if you bring in a succulent and you have a north or east window, or you think it's it's, it's going to get long, it's going to get leggy, it's going to fall apart. All the leaves are going to fall off, and you just it's they're really better if you can grow them under lights yeah. or outside. True. True. Yes. Another thing happens is when succulents start shedding leaves, people start watering it more. So not realizing uh, that yeah. it might be because of That's light. True. Yeah, that's right. It's really more about light. That's right. If they have if they have enough light, they probably won't drop leaves unless you let them dry out or over what or give them too much water or let them sit in water. But yeah, that is it is disheartening to see people love succulents so much and then they fail. I don't want people to fail with their plants. I want them to be happy and buy more plants and so that there's not just me out there that's a plant hoarder. Yeah. Yeah. We had lost you for a minute there my phone wanted to update its system i'm like no not right now <laughs> <laughs> okay so a couple of things um uh, so plants are great for decor and everything but i think one of the things that plants really help and now we are also seeing that happen in lockdown is they provide a kind of a i would say relief or support for mental health mental well being is there any uh oh. Definitely. I, I, if I am having a bad day, which we've all had a lot of bad days in the last few weeks, I just come out here or I, I get a plant and I, I start grooming it. I'll wash it. I'll, you know, take care of the plants. I'll repot something, get a new pot, mix up some soil. I mean, there's just, it's, there's nothing better. It just like everything goes away, all those bad things. <laughs> And it, it does help. I think, it's, and I, I hear that, right, that the online sales for plants is up like 400% or something. I don't even know the percentage, but just crazy right. how many people are ordering stuff online. And I've even seen pictures where they're like, here's my this spot before quarantine, and here it is afterwards, and it's got like, you know, 30 new plants in it. I'm like, I love it. It's, yeah. it's amazing. And it makes a huge difference. Like, my kitty cat is out here with me. He's being he's being bad. <laughs> Perfect. He must be enjoying here with all the plants in general, right? It must be. He does. I don't let him be out by himself because there are plants out here. I don't want him to, you know, get into. But he seems to know now. I, I see. I feel like when he was young, it was harder. He would mess with plants he wasn't yeah. supposed to. But now he kind of knows, and he doesn't. He he really likes my spider plant and my ponytail palm, but nothing poisonous. So. And I, I watch him. That's very interesting because I get questions like this, but I don't have a pet, so I'm never able to answer. So how do you maintain plants with a pet? So there are two parts to this. How do you prevent and, them from running into the pots, like digging up soil and things like that? And oh, okay, I've, I've eaten my words so many times in the last year. I've had, I had, I'm always like, I have two cats. They don't bother my plants. And yeah. they really didn't. But then I got, I, they passed away and I got Henry the kitty. Oh boy. He has knocked down plants. He has smashed pots. He has ripped leaves off plants. Yeah. He's been a, a brat. He's calmed down a little bit now. He's over a year old now, or almost a year old. He's probably a year old. So, because yeah. um, I got him at the end of May. So yeah, he's a year old. So he's better now. But he was. I was. I ate every word. I had foil. I put foil on big plants so that he won't go get in there. Uh, I use uh, plastic forks yeah. upside down so they don't hurt him, but they are kind of like. Not comfortable for him to lay on. Um, I squirt him with a squirt, you know, a spray bottle, which I have someplace around here. Oh, a little, a, just water, just as, But now he just hears it. He hears the sound of me pumping it. He's like he just runs. He doesn't even get sprayed. 
So you, you just kind of teach them. And then, you know, make sure that, and especially with dogs, I know dogs are different. I've never had a dog. You really do need to keep the poisonous plants away from them because they'll chew them. So I tried to, wherever he was, I tried to put no plants that would, you know, bother him near there. And Vishal is asking, so what are the plants that are, say, poisonous for pets or dangerous for pets? I mean, obviously, oh, God, there's so many. in this plant, in this book, they, yes. I, every plant tells you whether it's pet friendly. I didn't do that in the other one because they didn't ask me to and I didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, so pet, pet safety, ferns are good. They don't, ferns don't bother them. Um, I do know that. Uh, philodendrons are toxic. Defamacchia, pothos. Um, yeah, n none of the ferns are toxic. Um, I think all the bottom feeders of uh, tropical forest would be poisonous. That's my guess. Like money plants. What is it? So all the aeroid family uh, monsters. Yes. And yes. all of them. Yes. That Unfortunately. Yeah, but he doesn't, you know, like I said, he doesn't seem to bother them. He really likes the grassy ones, like the, the, the spider plant. That's fine for your plant or your cats. I mean, I don't want him to chew on them because it makes them look awful. Ponytail palms, he loves to, they love that because it's grassy. Um, you can, some people say just grow cat grass or wheat grass. Yep. And then they chew on that and then, then they're not going to bother your plants. But then again, they're probably going to throw it up on your rug in a few minutes. So <laughs> I just try to keep them away from the plant. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, but before we go, I would like you to talk about your this book because this is one book I know which is available here. I got it from Amazon. Okay. Uh, Amazon oh, good. But then I got this one. I can and then they they brought it. They brought it. I they brought it out in a little mini version too at Christmas time. It's just the same book only in a miniature version. Oh. You know, okay. it's tiny. You know, and it ha I think we took a couple of things out of it. So it's just the same plant book. Um, you know, I, it took a long time to write this. This is my first book. I would change some things. I don't particularly, these little tiny pictures are not my friend. Yeah. But they said that was, that was the look at the time. Okay. I'm hoping someday I can redo it. Because um, we took big pictures. <laughs> I see and they put little some big pictures in between. Yeah, there's big pictures in between. So, um. It was fun. My daughter, my daughter and I did this book and we kind of, uh, yeah, she, we did this book together. She was the photographer. Okay. And I love that, that we had that time together to do this. So yeah, it was, it was fun. And I think I covered everything and you know, it's really nice. I don't know how many house plant books you have. I have every house plant book that was ever printed hmm. back from all the way back from the forties and twenties and whatever. So I uh, do you know who Elvin McDonald is. Elvin McDonald wrote like 40 books. Yes, Elvin McDonald. I know. Yeah. Yes, he edited this book for me. Oh, we're wow. friends. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So I felt like this is like he went through every word of this and he didn't really change too much, but he did. He was very helpful. So um, he's the one that told me not to say artificial light, to say electric light, because it's still light, even though it's made by electricity. It's not really artificial, it's light. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I never use the word very anymore. Yeah. He's like, don't use the word very. Anyway, I'm going to go see him again in September. I got to meet him um, a few years ago. So um, I felt good about that, that he helped me edit this book. So um, good. And he has great books, too. So, yeah, it was fun to write. It was hard work. Yeah. And then this one was a little, it gets a little easier. <laughs> what is this one about, the growing dark? Uh, the girl in the dark, it's it's just low light plants or medium light plants. Yeah. They they just did that as a play on the words glow in the dark. You know, you can't grow anything in the dark. We all know that. Right? So, um, you know, it's got like the cast iron plant and everything's in like really hot colors, you know, like pinks and um, blues, real hot fluorescent colors. Uh, I love the parallel peperomia. Oh, that's peperomias aren't toxic to. That I knew that he. I had a peperomia obtusifolia, yeah. and I had it out on the place where Henry likes to lay. Right. And every most, oh, not every day, but quite often, he would bring me a leaf so that I would play fetch with him. Hmm. That plant has passed away, but I knew it wouldn't hurt him, yeah. so I let him. I, I I sacrificed it for him, but I have some starts because he cut he cut a couple branches off, so I still have it. I just yeah. have to cut it. Up. So um, yeah, peperomias are not, and those are very hot plants right now. So. And I don't think Palatia. Great because I had I think five peperomia in my office, 
and yeah. we couldn't water because of lockdown for almost uh, six weeks, and all peperomias are fine. I'm surprised. Yes, I, I I killed many peperomias by by giving them too much water. Yeah, keeping them too wet, yeah. so they like to dry out. That is true. So yeah, and he he likes that and ferns. Um, yeah, there's a lot of low light to me, really to medium light plants in here. Okay. No, there's no fiddly figs in here. I think I put Sansevieria, did I put Sansevieria in here? But we all know that Sansevieria can tolerate low light, but it really likes high light. I see Sansevieria so, in this one. Uh, yes. Because I learned the term, one term I learned from your book is the bird nest Sansevieria. Because I, I would, yeah, I mean, I have both kind of snake plants and I would keep explaining that one is spiral and one is non-spiral, but I didn't know it's called bird nest. Oh yeah, they call it the bird's nest because it kind of looks like a little bird's nest. Yeah. So yeah, I love, I love Sansevieria. I probably have, I don't know, 30 or 40 varieties. Wow. I'd like more. I finally got a, uh, do you have a variegated whale's tail or Mason Congo is what I call it, but do you have the big, and I finally I got a variegated, a variegated whale's tail, but I saw it today on Daryl, uh, the houseplant journal. Yes, uh, Daryl has one, yes. Yeah. I bought one, uh, this man near us, he always gets all the new houseplants. Yeah. Um, and he brought, in, he brought in some houseplants. I could have probably dropped at least a thousand dollars, but I didn't. But I only bought the, the variegated whale's tail and I think I paid sixty dollars for it. Oh, my husband's not watching this. Um, I could have, I wanted a philodendron birkin. I wanted the, I've had a pink, Pink Princess Philodendron, I killed a couple of those, so I didn't get that. The Thai Constellation was $600. Wow. So I didn't buy it. <laughs> I wanted to stay married. <laughs> so I'm waiting for those. So yeah. yeah. It was tempting. It was tempting. But you should and that's another thing. People plan. buy these plants and they don't have room for them. Right? I'm one should always look at expensive plants and not buy them, and then you're like, Listen, I saved so much, I can spend some money on some other plants. Well, I know, but it was, I have, I have so many that I really wanted that one. Anything variegated, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I love them. But yeah, that's the thing with the Monstera. I have one over there and I love it, but it's getting so much, it's getting so monstrous that I, you know, it's, it's, my husband's like, well, you should, maybe you should get rid of some, some plants to make room for it. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I think we just have to rearrange. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting very big though, so. So that's another thing. Keep in mind how big the plant is going to become before you buy it. Because if you have a 100 square foot apartment or, you know, a 500 square foot apartment and a plant that's going to take up 100 square feet, you probably shouldn't buy it. <laughs> True. Also, I think that's a great tip for when you're planting a plant, you should plant it for the size it will become. I mean, at least keep space. Uh, right. right. Because what I find even in say when people do plantations in parks and all because they see a small tree they put it too close together right well yes but yes you expect it to become big in 10 years right that's the purpose of planting trees in parks or things like that right yeah. but then they yeah well even outside so we we own a garden center and, and people want to put we go, we drive around because we look at landscapes and you'll see, you know, trees planted 10 feet apart that are going to get 30 foot across. Like yeah. well, you could have planted every other tree or every third tree and it would have been fine, but they don't, they don't look at it that way. They want instant gratification, instant screen, instant tree. So yeah, things start small. This is going to get to be a, even though this looks like a tiny plant, but it's going to get big around eventually. True. So True. yeah. Thank you so much for joining in and thank you for taking out time. Thank you very much for having me. This was so fun. It's so hard to believe that you're in India and I'm in America and we can talk like this. It's, it's amazing. True. True. So I think <laughs> we can join us together. One is tech and the other is plants. I mean, it's amazing. We can talk the same language in terms of plants being in yes. different continents. That's right. It's wonderful. Plants are that way. They, they join us together. I love right. it. True. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining in. Uh, I really see messages and people are loving it. And thank you so much. All right. Thank you. And if you, if they, you know, join, you probably have a website. I have a website. Everybody come check us out. I love it. Do that. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.